children. Shoot them, you're not gonna shoot or what? Hello, my name's Kevin Abraham. I'm 24. Well, I grew up in Black River uh, most of my life, up until I was about 15. And I um, ended up uh, getting involved in gangs in Winnipeg. Drinking a lot, selling drugs. And then I ended up hurting uh, my victim that I went to uh, Stony Mountain. When Kevin was in the gang, he was the enforcer. His job was to punish gang members. He finally hit bottom when he was ordered to deboard or beat up his own brother, a fellow gang member. He followed orders and watched as his brother Daryl was badly beaten. Kevin started to look for a way out. I started uh, working with elders. They started teaching me a lot about uh, loving our people, about being proud about who we are. Kevin, uh, I, I met him here in Stoney and uh, he participated in sweats and ceremonies and uh, developed an interest in, uh, in the ceremonies that we do and uh, he eventually became part of uh, the drum group and uh, he started uh, to work on making hand drums and rebuilding the drum uh, that is in uh, on the Mikana and uh, I've uh, shared with him a number of things about the drum, about ceremonies, and uh, how it all fits into our culture. Right now I'm Kevin's employer. I'm also a friend, he was a uh, youth in my program 10 years ago and he uh, found me 10 years later at the Broadway Neighborhood Centre and uh, asked for an opportunity to volunteer and uh, he did really well so we brought him on as an employee. So it's come full circle, he went from being uh, in the program and now he's helping us as uh, one of the youth leaders. Kevin had a vision in prison. He saw himself walking in a field, carrying a large bundle. The elder working with him helped explain the meaning of his vision, that the weight he was carrying was a drum. He was going home with it to Little Black River. Kind of a good reminder not to ever come back here. That's for sure. As he did his time in Stony, Kevin made the grandfather drum and all he would need to carry it home to Little Black River. Kevin has changed a great deal because when I first met him, he was going to do everything himself and he soon realized he needed help. And that's the key thing is for them to realize they need help and then they reach out and then that's where we can really work with them and support them in the things that they have to do. Hi, bro. Hi, bro. Is he going Spanish? Good to see you. Before he leaves, Kevin goes back to prison to talk to his brother. It is the first step in the walk to heal wounds. Kevin wants to share his vision of hope and try and give Daryl strength to go on. When you made that decision to uh, walk the red road, man, it really made me really proud of you. Because you finally opened your eyes and realized that you can't walk two lives. I'm really starting to doubt myself too. I just started really feeling like I don't think I was going to make it. I just feel that, I, that it's right that I have to do it. When I finish the walk, I know I'm not done. You know, it's just only the beginning. I know him because I see him at Broadway every day when I go there. I wanted to bring him along because um, I've been working with him since I started at Broadway. He said he heard a lot of people, so he wants to take his jump for a walk. Having this journey, you're going to travel with this drum, is not an easy one. But uh, as you go on, that drum will help you. You need to talk to that drum and think about why you're doing all this, that drum will help 
not only you, your family, but the whole community. I just can't believe that I'm actually gonna do this now. I mean, it's just right from my dream. And it's coming true now. Carrying the 55-pound grandfather drum from Stony Mountain to Little Black River, it will take Kevin four days to cover the distance of 180 kilometers. Throughout the years when I was growing up, my parents did the best they could with me. To, uh, I did whatever I, whatever I can to, to listen to them up until I was about 15. My parents had a, had a divorce. Right after that, I felt I didn't have a family and I ended up uh, getting involved in gangs in Winnipeg. They were the only ones that made me feel like I had a family again. Excuse me? What are you walking for? Walking for the youth. Kevin's mother, Linda Moore, who was raised Christian, does not understand his traditional beliefs. One day he said, um, you know what, Mom, he said, I really changed. I have something in my life now that changed me, he said. Eh? I was always against it before. I have always had negative thoughts of it. And because I didn't, I guess I just picked up negative thoughts about it from the way people talked about it. At first, when I heard Kevin was into this, I uh, I wanted to, to try and tell him, hey, well, what about Christianity I learned, you know? So he started telling me. And I listened to him and I said, you know what I said, I'm not gonna condemn you for the way you believe, I said. It's up to you, I said. And then that one day there, uh, he sang a song and he started to tell me the words to the song. And I said, hey, I didn't know they had words to their songs. I thought they were just making those noises, you know. <laughs> and I said, oh, so that's what it means. Hi, babe. Hi. I left from Stony about 10 or something. Really? Yeah. I gotta get to Little Pegasus by 6. I got two hours yet. It's good to know that they're, they know I'm doing it. So maybe they weren't gonna come and look for me at all. The reason that he was walking, he said it was for healing. He said it was for his dad that he has leukemia. He wanted to do this and no matter what kind of pain he felt, you know, and so I said, okay. And I said, I'll support you, that's what you want to do. You're making it hard on yourself. Mm -hmm. Right now, your body's trying to adjust to carrying the drum. No, I'm gonna put it back on. Yeah. I'm gonna take the drum so you don't carry it. Oh, I see, that's the thing. If I put the drum down and then somebody takes it, it takes the whole purpose away of what I'm trying to do. Okay. I mean, if people think that, you know what I mean, that I can't do it or whatever, or I'm sick of that sh it just feels like no faith. Faith whatsoever. I mean, I went through that already in jail. I told them when I was in jail that I was going to drop out of my gang life and everything. One of them told me that I just don't have enough heart. And I just today I just felt the same way. Like, I know it's for a good reason and they're looking out for me and everything, but it just made me feel the same way. I make it past Lebo. I hope I make it past there first. 
hopefully to make it the broken head. It's kind of buried. Can you tell me a story about the buffaloes? About the buffaloes? Yeah. Which one? Anyone that's a buffalo. The buffaloes, eh? <clears throat> well, I know for a long time that our people have been waiting for the white buffalo. Now he's, now he's here. But he's in the zoo. When uh, I play my drum, it sort of reminds me of of the buffalo running. Yesterday was like flashbacks of when I first got into uh, Stony. A few people were mentioning to me that they that they'll help carry it, walk with me, and all that. And I really didn't want to. I didn't want any help. But today is kind of reminded me of like the first time I like took my first step and accepted uh, help for the first time. Be good if my brothers could help carry this. Who? My brothers. Are they allowed there? Well, it's up to me. Yeah. My mom, my dad, my brothers, my sisters, my nephews. They all came out. Give me a little more strength. Where's my tobacco there? I gotta put this inside the drum somewhere. Why am I here? To help them, to support them, like to help them along the walk for those that need help. So for ourselves so that their prayers will be answered when this is all over, I guess, and we'll get to where we're going, so. Look at all this garbage, man. across a lot of like uh, paper and all that like the cups from McDonald's or uh, A&W and Tim's and and they're all tossed to the side of the road they go into a lot of the reserves areas and First Nations people's areas they go there they start cutting down our trees and all that and making it for all this paper and then where do you see it right along the side of the road Mm -hmm. On the third day, my boss ended up coming out, he was also my friend, so I figured that I'd let him carry it too. <sighs> For some reason, I feel like my dad understands in a way, eh? But at the same time, my mom doesn't. I guess on the way here yesterday, she was talking to my brother and I'm telling my brother and I'm, I don't know why you boys believe in, like why you boys believe in this, eh? And she goes, I didn't raise you guys up like that and this and that. And that's the thing I was mentioning to that I wish I was brought up like that. I had to go find out for myself and I was telling my brother, man, I was like, I should get my uncle to come and meet me tomorrow and bring me his horses. <clears throat> It's, no. What? Horses didn't come till the Europeans came. That's true. Really? Yeah, didn't you know that? No. This kid didn't even know he was native until <laughs> 10 minutes ago. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> Are you Ojibwe? What? He doesn't even know that either. <clears throat> so what are you walking for? I'm coming from Stony Mountain, uh, Penn. Uh -huh. That's where I built this drum. I was involved in uh, gangs and all that. I'll see how many people in When I was in Stony, after I built this drum, I, I dropped out when I was in there. And 
ever since I've been carrying this drum, it's uh, it's helped me to stay sober since since I started working with it. Okay, thanks. <coughs> has a deep, deep hurt inside of him for a lot of the problems that he's caused to his community, Little Black River, and uh, he feels that this is a way of showing his new path, his new direction, and to ask for forgiveness, perhaps, or to let them know that, you know, he plans to uh, turn his life right around. A lot of times uh, promises are made only to be taken away. This is a promise that Kevin made and to see him see this thing through I think is really important. I'm carrying this drum for a lot of the youth now, for our people who are lost right now. I couldn't understand why my drum was so heavy or why I made it so heavy. I guess I realized that throughout the whole year since I was a kid is my life has always been heavy too. I hope that our youth today, that some of them open up their eyes. We're losing too many of them. And along the way when I was walking, I saw a lot of crosses along the highways. And it got me to think that maybe some of them lost their lives was because of alcohol too. Tired. My body is just kaput. You know. I don't know if I can go on. Is that too too short? You gotta pick up again. The same one. Well, you want it a little longer. That's good enough. Yeah. yeah that's good enough. You, you, you want it tight? Uh... That's good enough. Yeah. Okay, let's go. No raid. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. This man, I went and picked up from Fort Alec, his name is uh, William Kent. And he helped Kevin carry the drum for maybe 10 kilometers. I'm supportive with him to try and get somebody to help him carry the drum. That culture that he's in right now, is, uh, it is good for him that he, because he's, he's away from the, the gangs and he's away from the drugs and he's away from the alcohol. From here to the turn off, it's uh, around roughly 11 miles. And from the turn off to the reserve, it's four miles. I know he's hurting. And Scannerberry, I told him, why don't you just quit? Why don't you just leave it? I said, are you sure it's worth it? And I know he's really changed a lot. I could sense the weakness in him that we never had before. I know Kevin's not a quitter. I know he'll finish it. But I'm proud of him that, that he's doing this. And I feel better about everything today. Like, uh, I don't want him to quit it now like I did the other day, you know, <laughs> when I saw how tired he was. Now I just want him to complete it because I know he wants to do it. Just incredible how the drum just kept bringing people closer together, like his family became 
even more supportive and people were being drawn in more and more to the to the cause to the purpose and it's, it's just a fantastic thing to see especially out on the the highway and all the support that was was coming along like it was just just incredible very emotional Kevin has only begun his real journey. It is a long walk he will take many times over before he is whole again. Having reached Little Black River, Kevin spends the final moments of his walk completing his vision. By himself at a sacred site along the beach, he finally places his burden down. Thank you.